What's going on, Chicago? Welcome into CHGO Tavern Style. I'm Matt Peck from CHGO Bulls. I'm Cody Del Mendo from CHGO Cubs. What's up, Cody? How you doing, buddy? I'm doing good. <laughs> Tavern Style brought to you by our friends at Salerno's Pizza. Uh, head over to their Grand Avenue location. Call their number, 312-666-3444 to make your reservation today to get, get some of this delicious za. Uh, Cody, today's topic, you ready for it? Oh, buddy. Bears OTAs. Bears fans frothing at the mouth, but trouble in paradise, perhaps, because <laughs> our very own CHO Bears reporter, Nicholas Moriano, on the scene at Bears OTAs, saying, quote, really rough day for Caleb Williams and the starting offense, a lot of incomplete passes and near interceptions. In the seven-on-seven -seven period, Williams completed just three passes. Jalen Johnson nearly had a pick over the middle of the field. In the team period, most of the passes were completed just to the flat, and Williams held onto the ball for a long time. Worth noting that Roma Dunze and Keenan Allen did not participate in these seven-on-sevens. Uh, also, Nate Davis and Darnell Wright were not practicing today. So two of the biggest weapons mm -hmm. and two pieces that you assume you're relying on with your offensive line. Sure. Not there. Bears fans probably overreacting to this anyway, right? <laughs> I mean, that's what we do, right? Uh, Listen, I. it's May 23rd? Yes, it is. May 23rd. <laughs> it's May 23rd. We got I, some time. Yeah, I got some time. That said, you know, my expectations for the Bears this year, um, you can share yours after me, obviously, but, like, my expectations are that they have to be a playoff team. For me, they have to be a playoff team for this, for the next season to be a success. I know Caleb is a rookie quarterback. He's also the number one overall pick. Everyone's calling this guy baby Patrick Mahomes. Like, mm -hmm. all these things. They added... They, they, they drafted Roma Dunze. They've improved the offensive line. Their defense is already really good after trading for Sweat and extending him. And, like, it took massive steps last year. Yep. To me, they they have to make the playoffs in 2024 uh, for it to be a success. So am I taking this first day of OTAs that seriously? No. However, however, I am, whenever you're telling me that he's not getting the ball – getting rid of the ball quick enough that right there i'm getting a little ptsd all right yeah so well, we traded justin fields because we wanted to get a quarterback who anticipates well first day not a great sign bro and, and <laughs> not just the ptsd of a, a young qb who's not getting the uh, the ball out quickly enough but and shout out to our buddy greg braggs who was at uh you know some of their early offseason uh activities last year and watching justin fields and the bears offense and saying everything's going out to the flat like there's no verticality to this Bears offense that we're watching and a lot of people said hey Braggs you're panicking about nothing it's no big deal it's no big deal and then we you're went out there and fan. watched Getze draw up play after play after play where Justin Fields is throwing behind the line of scrimmage or barely beyond it and yeah. Bears fans are so hyped up about this number one overall rookie QB a new system we brought in a new offensive coordinator there will be growing pains yeah. like you know in OTAs in training camp and through the first few weeks of the season you're expecting growing pains with a rookie QB and a new system and him learning a brand new offensive playbook but it I think it is the verticality or lack thereof mm -hmm. that Bears fans are always going to be concerned about wanting to finally see a modern NFL offense yeah yeah, no, I don't blame them, I and mean, that's how I feel. You probably feel the same way, it sounds like, as well. So, like, you know, it's the first day of OTAs again, so I can't take it too seriously. But that my expectations, whether they're too high or not, I mean, they we better start seeing improvement as as the summer goes along. Like, I don't maybe I'm being a little too hard, but they haven't won a playoff game since I was like eighteen. Okay, and they haven't made the playoffs in like five years. All right, like. The, the one good thing that I like about the organization at this point is that they have they have put their quarterback that they've drafted in a good position. Yeah. They have, he has weapons. They have yeah. a decent defense. They have a good offensive line. It feels like maybe maybe it still needs some help, but it, it's growing. Like there's, it's, it feels like they have set him up for success. To me, they're just to at least make the playoffs. I know the NFC North will be, will be tough, but I... You, with the added play, uh, playoff position, uh, playoff spots. Yeah, the like, extra wild card. Yeah, the extra yeah. wild card. Like, this this team should be a playoff team in 2024, well, man. No Peck, excuses. You brought up, or last time you were on, mm -hmm. Tavern style, uh, Vinny Duber blindly predicted sure. the Bears yeah. record to be 9-8. Vinny Duber, a.k.a. a human magic ball. Is 9-8 <laughs> too greedy? I, I mean, should this I, team be expected to go, what, 10-7? and, 10 and seven? See, I, I don't think that's too greedy. And you know what? Let's put a pin in that, and let's get back to the, the expectations conversation of whether Bears' expectations are too lofty. 
Just another quick reminder and shout out mm-hmm. to check out our friends at Salerno's on tap, located at 1201 West Grand Avenue in Chicago's West Town. Our neighbors, just a mm-hmm. few blocks down, enjoy their tavern style pizza and their ice cold beers they have available. Whether you're heading to a game, want to watch that game live on one of their many big screen TVs in their dining room, or have it delivered, watch from the comfort of your own home. Salerno's has you covered either way. Go to salernospizza.com or call that number 312 666 3444. Mention CHGO. And you'll get half off your pizza. Bam. Oh, it's a great deal. I love affordable pizza. Yeah. Especially good affordable pizza. Absolutely. So Bears fans freaking out about a bad day at OTAs is to be expected from this fan base because we are that starved yes. for a winner. I don't think it is putting expectations too high to say you got to at least be nine and eight yeah. because of all the things you laid out about the, the pieces that are already in place. Mm-hmm. The big questions to me are, How's this rookie QB going to look? Will he have at least a decent offensive line to protect him? And will everything else that's already been there mm-hmm. remain as good as we've come to expect with, with the growth of the defense? I think the Bears defensively this coming season should be at least a mediocre, if not above average defense. And you add all these pieces on the offensive skill positions to help out your rookie QB. Yeah. The, the blueprint for success in today's NFL is a young rookie QB, not necessarily a rookie, but a young QB on a not max enormous contract yet and paying your skill positions and your line big contracts that you can afford because you have a good QB who's not breaking your bank. Mm-hmm. That's where the Bears are about to be. This is about to be year one of that. So expectations when you are entering a window like that have to be high. Yeah. Hey, like. Like I said, they put this is like the first time in my life they put a quarterback in a good situation. It feels like I I, can't, I don't think I'm wrong about that, right? You didn't so, think they put Andy Dalton in a good position, <laughs> Mr. Trubisky, Mike, Mike Lennon, <laughs> Mike Lennon, yeah, <laughs> Justin Fields is, is a perfect example of how they didn't put him in a good position. No kidding. But listen, I hope tomorrow or in the next week they're talking about how things have improved. Yeah. I, I really genuinely do feel like that will happen, but. I don't blame Bears fans, like you said, for, you know, maybe having a little PTSD, uh, like, what's wrong? Yeah. You know, you know like you said, <laughs> Keenan Allen didn't play today. Neither yeah. did Roman Noah Duse. Duse. Uh, you know, Davis and Wright not there on your mm-hmm. offensive line. Yeah. There's a lot of mm-hmm. grains of salt that right. we should be considering here. But we have months of waiting. And months Bears fans, I mean, start the season tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. I. I don't think I'm I'm off about my just ex- expectations for the season in general. I, I think ten and seven is fair. Yeah, ten and seven, and if that gets you to a wild card spot, great. Mm-hmm. I, I think if you're talking about a, a team that won seven games last season, different QB, okay, should have won ten. You're, you're returning a lot of the same pieces. You added talent on the offensive side, and they coughed up what three or four different games in fourth quarters that they probably should have won. That they led by double digits. Exactly. Yeah. So go asking for them to go from seven wins last year. To 10? Yeah. I do not think that's asking a lot. Right. So, we'll see. Get uh, it make together. sure you're following our guy, Nick Moriano, and everybody on our CHGO Bears B for more updates on OTAs as they progress. Make sure you also subscribe to the CHGO Sports YouTube channel. Peace. We're all silly like the mayor.